All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to lecture five of mathematical methods for physicists, uh, part two. Uh, so we have been talking about uh, irreducible representations, and I hope that I have given you a fairly nice intuitive idea of what an irreducible representation is. And uh, well, first, of course, it helps to understand what a representation is. So that idea should uh, be clear in your head. Um, and I've given you several examples of, of, of representations. Uh, now, an, an irreducible representation is one which can be written as a direct sum of two other representations, two smaller representations, right? And, in, and so an irreducible representation is one which cannot be written in, the, in that way, okay? So if you have a, if you have this, expression if you have a, something like this this is a r is a reducible representation now this reducibility comes how do you check if a representation is reducible like i said you have to see whether the matrix matrix can be put in a block diagonal form right but now the thing is that uh, the components of a matrix depend on the basis in which you're working, right? If you change your basis, so uh, as I explained, if you change your basis vector by some unitary, you perform a, a orthogonal or unitary transformation, right? Your basis vectors will change. All of the operators, the matrix, the matrices will change. They will change by this unitary operation, by the similarity transformation. And when this happens, right, a, 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 a matrix which is originally diagonal will no longer be diagonal. Right, and a matrix which is block diagonal will no longer be block diagonal. The components will mix, right? So this is also how you diagonalize a, a matrix, right? You diagonalize a matrix by finding a, a suitable transformation under which, under which you, your matrix becomes diagonal, right? That's called diagonalization. So, um, so since you can, when you perform this change of of basis, your representation matrices change, right? So R goes to R prime, and I should maybe just to emphasize the fact that this is the representation matrix for the group element, the group element is the same. The representation matrix has changed. So in a given basis, a, a representation matrix may not be block diagonal, right? So the, if we can find a, a, a basis in which it is block diagonal, then we say it is, it is reducible, okay? Now, uh, The one small point is the following, uh, that if you have a representation, matrices, or I should say, representations are unchanged, under these uh, similarity transformations. So what does that mean? That means, so, so you, have a, you have a group G, right? You have a vector space on which uh, the group acts, right? And uh, you have the representation matrices, right? And these representation matrices, uh, they, uh, you can write it either like this, right? It lives in the set of operators, linear operators which act on V. Alternatively, you can also write it like this, R of G, like this. 
right? So this says that it's a map from the vector space to itself, right? So such a map is a matrix. That's what a matrix does, right? So then we we perform this uh, this similarity transformation. Okay. Now, under the similarity transformation, what happens? Let's say that I have two group elements, G1 and G2, and the corresponding representation matrices are RG1 and RG2, right? And what what do these uh, how these matrices satisfy this group multiplication? axiom right right so the product of the representations of two elements is equal to the representation of the product of the two group elements right so what happens under a unitary transformation r of g1 goes to some other matrix r prime and r of g2 goes to r prime g2 right and what is let's write down r prime g1 what is it it's a u r g1 u inverse what is r sorry not r2 r g2 prime is u and i'll just stop writing this 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 tilde symbol because it it takes up too much time okay it's understood that these are matrices u1 so what happens if i multiply these new matrices with each other right so i can just take these expressions for the prime matrices and multiply them right what will i get well you have uh over here you have the u and its inverse so that just becomes the identity and so this expression becomes u r g1 R G two, U inverse, right? And this can be written as U R of G one G two, U inverse, right? And this these new matrices, right? They form a representation of of the group, right? Why is that? Because according to the similarity transformation this is equal to r prime g1 g2 right by definition this is r prime g1 g2 right so if i take r g1 g2 and i transform it i get r prime g1 g2 but that is also equal to the product of the two r primes so this means that r prime is also a representation right and so we would say that these two representations are equivalent they are equivalent under the under this unitary transformation right so one can ask how uh, how should one how can one identify uh, different representation right so what we want to find is some invariant invariant means some invariant property of rep some property of the representation which uh, is not changed under this 
similarity transformation right now if you look at two matrices which are related in this way by such a transformation and you want to ask what is left invariant well one quantity which is left invariant is the trace right now uh do you all know about the cyclic property of the trace right so the cyclic property of the trace i mean i presume everybody knows this uh it just says that if you take the product of any n number of matrices you can always perform a cyclic permutation and the trace will remain the same okay right? and this is easy to show because you can write it down uh, this product in in the index using indices you can write down in terms of indices okay so i'll leave that as an exercise and what i say i leave that as an exercise that means it is an exercise i expect you to do it okay so the 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 trace of uh the the matrix is is left invariant right and so we refer to this this trace right this is called the character it's called the character uh of this representation of the representation right and so if you if you look at the set of all such elements for each for each group element right you find the 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 representation matrices and for each representation matrix you calculate the trace that set of numbers is called the character of that representation and uh, the word character where does that come from well i mean like how you say na no? like some person's character like that's how you identify that person na no? yeah aisa hai ye aisa hai character so the i mean this is just a way of saying that how to identify a character now uh this is so what do we what do we know we know the following number one uh that matrices related by similarity transformation have the same character right we have already seen this this is easy to see number 2 equivalent reps have the same character okay so uh what this uh what what uh, what is a uh, well the equivalent represent equivalence i mean these are basically the same thing i mean there's not much difference between these two okay so we'll just we'll just call it uh, 1a and 1b it's uh one a and one b and then uh there is the there is the corollary okay so reps with the same character are equivalent 
Okay, so it becomes a two way. It becomes a if and only if, right? So two representations have the same character if and only if those two representations are equivalent. Right. So remember that uh, we. I started out this uh, lecture by saying that well, this is a problem. Find all the repre a representation, irreducible representations of the cyclic group. So how will we find the uh, irreducible representation? We will identify them according to their character table. Then what are the what is the orthogonality condition? We'll see that in a second. Uh, what we will see is that the different representations of a group are orthogonal to each other. Okay, so uh, you know, in in the same way that when you have a vector space, right? So when you have vector space, you have some set of basis vectors, and these set of basis vectors are orthogonal right or i mean orthonormal or orthogonal right this is the orthogonality condition so for a group right how do you characterize all of the group you characterize the group by looking at all of its representation right you look at all of the representations and these representations are orthogonal to each other right so there is a kind of a similar relationship uh so i this is this is not this is not an equation this is just a uh, a template i mean we we'll look at the precise form of the expression in a little bit but basically you have some some quantity which depends on the representation i so this corresponds to the i trep this corresponds to the j trep and uh, then you can take this kind of a dot product between these two quantities and uh, rather than calling it r because r is for the representation matrix i'll call it something else let's say ti and tj and this is gives you uh, the, these these two are orthogonal perpendicular to each other right so in a sense all of the different representation of a group you can think of them as basis vectors right so how do you characterize a vector space a vector space is the set of all points right in the in that space and any point is given as a linear superposition of the basis vector so similarly if you want to think of a group uh one way to think of a group is that it, it is the it is the linear superposition of all its of all, all its representation now this is an abstract idea i don't expect you to understand it right away so don't worry too much about it okay then number 3 uh the character of the identity right so i should instead of e i'll write 1 because i'm using this of the identity is equal to n which is the dimension of the representation right and we know this already right so if you have a three dimension if you have a what is the identity this is the identity for the three dimensional representation and what is the trace of this the trace of this is 3 which is the dimension right then uh, number 4 the 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 character of some group element is unchanged under this operation okay 
and now this looks like a similarity transformation but keep in mind that this is not a a, a transformation of the representation matrix it is a transformation of the group element right so we are taking the group element and we are taking another group element h and we are getting a third group element so this will also belong to g right this object will also belong to g because uh see h inverse is a, is an element of the group h is an element of the group so the product of these three will also be a group element right and this is called the conjugate element of g uh, with respect to h okay and the the character of this conjugate element remains the same again that is uh, uh that is easy to show because let's say that i have a representation right which is a matrix r of g right under the conjugation what happens r of g goes to r of h g and h inverse using the group multiplication uh, property this can be written as r of h r of g r of h inverse right and if i take the trace of this conjugated group element what is this this is r of h r of g r of h inverse now r of h inverse what is this going to be what is what is this going to be in terms of a matrix can somebody tell me sonali sukman how can i remember h and h inverse these are group elements these are not the matrices right this object is a matrix right r of h or r of g or r of h inverse so how can i write r the representation matrix of the inverse of an element nobody nobody knows the answer or is it so easy that none of you want to say it okay ask yourself what property should they satisfy right if i have two group elements and i multiply these two representation matrices what do i get which is what r of e e identity. is the identity so what does this tell you about r of h inverse so these are all made ha huh? yeah go ahead what is r of h inverse the r inverse of h right so if you put this back into the trace expression you get trace of r h r g r in inverse h which you can use the cyclic property of the trace again to bring this around which becomes the trace of r of g right so
this the character of the conjugated group element uh, is, is the character is left invariant okay okay now um okay so now we'll look at some examples of okay so we'll consider uh we'll consider this group okay what is this group c stands for cyclic okay cyclic group of order order 2 now what is what do we mean by order right so this is a definition the order of a of a group and this applies only to finite groups discrete groups uh, you cannot uh, apply it to a continuous group like the group of rotation is equal to we can write it like this which is the number of group elements okay so this is called the order of the group so what is the order of this group the order of uh, this C two is two, right? And uh, what is the multiplication table? The multiplication table is E dot E dot E is E, right? Because E is just the identity. Okay, and C dot C. will also give me the identity okay now uh let's look at a representation of this okay so so far we have not this is this is just the group multiplication table we have not described given a representation okay so we'll look at a representation what is the representation a representation takes the group element and maps it to a matrix right so in our case we'll take the group element e and map it to uh map it to 1 okay and we'll take the group element c and we'll map that also to 1 what is this called this is called the trivial representation so the trivial representation is something you can have for any group so and you can just take all the elements of your group and map them to the identity identity it can be one or it can be an n by n matrix it doesn't matter so maybe i'll just call it one this is the trivial representation then we have the a non trivial representation which is the following r of e is equal to 1 and r of c the second element is minus 1 okay and you can just look at this and you can it's easy to see that this condition is satisfied right 1 times minus 1 is minus 1 which is c uh the only one that is not trivial is this c dot c is equal to e and minus 1 times minus 1 is equal to 1 right so this is a non trivial representation now we can ask what is the dimension of these two representations the 
they are both one dimensional right you can see that okay and now here's the interesting thing and i'll i'll just uh, give these representations a label okay so i'll call this one r of one so r of one denotes the first representation r of two denotes the second representation okay so once again what are the what is the representation uh, in r of one t goes to one t goes to one in r of t e goes to one t goes to minus one okay so these are my representation now let me consider let me treat these representation elements as a vector as elements of a vector okay so let me call this v1 what are these elements one and one for the trivial representation for the other one for the non trivial representation this vector is 1 and minus 1 what happens if i take the in a product of these two right i get so i should i should uh, to be to be absolutely uh, correct i should write it in this way the multiplication of the transpose of one vector with the other one right and this is zero right so this is the sense in which these representations are orthogonal okay so remember i had mentioned this orthogonality condition earlier right i had said that the representations of a group are orthogonal right so what what is this this orthogonality condition okay it's the following you for any representation we construct a vector so let's say we have the ith representation we construct this vector v of i what are the components of this vector right the components are the characters of the of the group element okay so what is n n is the order of the group that is the number of uh, elements the size of the group right and so if you take two such two such vectors they will be orthogonal there will be some uh, proportionality factor which we will uh, work out in a little bit and why do we use this character because remember this character is an invariant quantity right so the character of a group element is left invariant under similarity transformations of the representation it is also left invariant under the this conjugation conjugation operation okay all right now uh, so this is the first example okay we look at another the second example
So the second example we'll look at uh, the dihedral group, which we have talked about before, right? Dihedral group D3, group of, now what was this dihedral group? Again, let me just quickly remind you. This dihedral group is the group of discrete symmetries of a triangle in a plane, right? And how many uh, elements are there in this group? There are two. There are two rotations: one by one twenty, one by two forty, and there are three reflections. The reflections are around these perpendicular bisectors, right? So what is the order of this group? Anybody? So six. Right, so six, right? So we will we will write down uh, the. Uh, so first of all, we have the trivial representation, which we which is always there. Okay. So the trivial representation. Uh, and I will denote the group representation matrices with with uh, D or with B. Okay. And what are the group elements? First, let me just write down the group elements. You have the identity. Uh, you have two rotations, right? And uh, so I will write this as R rotation one and R two. Now remember R two, the rotation by 240 degrees is simply the square of the rotation of the first rotation, right? So I'll just write it as R square. Then you have three reflections, right? T one. T2 and T3, okay. Now, what are the representation? There is a trivial representation. Then there is another representation. So the, the non-trivial reps, okay. And there are two non-trivial representations. What are they? One of them is the following. Uh, D of R goes to one, okay? And D of E is also one. And D of T one is equal to minus one. Okay? Now you might ask, well, I have I have not specified what is the D of T two and D of T three, right? But if we go back to our group representation, uh, group multiplication table, uh, remember uh, that if I take uh, the product of any two uh reflections i get a third i get a rotation right so so i have this condition right i have t1 times t2 is equal to r with which i called r1 in the, the earlier case so according to this I should have D of T1, D of T2 is equal to D of R, right? Now what is D of R? D of R is one. D of T1 is minus one, right? So what should be D of T2? This will also be minus one. Okay. So D of T2 
and d of t3 these will all be minus 1 right so in this in this representation we have the following uh, mapping okay this is the first non trivial representation okay the second uh, non trivial representation is the one uh, in terms of uh, matrices and again i'll go back uh, to this uh, to this page here so in terms of matrices right we had seen the following we had uh, seen that uh, the reflection is mapped to minus 1 this matrix and the rotation r of 1 is mapped to this given uh, matrix minus 1/2 right so once again once you have these two matrices you can determine all the others okay so so what is our our representation this is the identity this is the first reflection and this is the rotation okay and i think i have already uh, given this as an exercise to you to determine the other group representation matrix so please do that okay and what is the dimension of this group of this representation it's 2 right uh and what is the dimension of 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 this representation it's one dimension right so d3 has two 1d reps and one 2d rep okay and uh, this this 2d rep okay this is irreducible so these are all irre irreducible representation now now the question is this orthogonality question right so so let me let me uh, explain this orthogonality condition and uh, for these for these representations okay so we have these are the group elements and then we have our representation so i'll write it like this d of 1 this is a trivial representation d of 2 this is the non trivial one dimensional representation okay so this is the dimension of the group dimension is one of the representation sorry and then you have the the two dimensional representation
Oh, no, sorry. This is the reflection matrix. Uh, this is R, okay. In R square, uh, you can obtain by taking the square of this matrix. Uh, I'll I'll just write down the answer. It's a little bit. My writing is a little small because of lack of space. Then this becomes minus one, zero one, and the other two. Become one half three by two three by two minus one half and the last one becomes one half minus root three by two minus root three by two minus one half and what is the dimension? The dimension is two. Okay. Now let's write down the character, the characters of for each of these, right? The character is a trace. It's just one, 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 right? And uh, Just give it a different uh, a different color just to distinguish it from okay right so the character this is the, these are the characters of the second representation. And then the characters of the third representation, right? So what is the trace of this? It's two. The trace of this is minus one. Uh, the trace of R2 is also minus one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So these are the three uh, the three traces, right? And uh, one second, let me just um, Okay, so uh, one second. Huh? Yeah, so now you can check explicitly that uh, these these characters are uh, these vectors are orthogonal to each other. So check the orthogonality of the of these character of these characters, and it's actually very. You can you can just look at it, and you can see that these vectors are orthogonal. This is the first vector. This is the second vector. When I take the dot product of these two. When I take the dot product of these two, what will I get? These will give me uh, plus three, and this this will give me minus three. When I take the dot product of this with the first vector, what will I get? Well, this will always give me zero. This will give me two, minus one, minus one, right? It will give me zero. So um, it's satisfied. Okay, so this is 
uh, one orthogonality, one statement of orthogonality. Uh, we will uh, look at another, there is a different orthogonality statement. We'll look at that uh, in the next class. Okay. So I'll stop here for now. And, and yeah, question. Any questions? No? Okay. All right. Excuse and, uh, me, uh, yeah. Uh, these are also equivalent representation. Which ones? They're, no, they're all inequivalent, right? Otherwise, why would we, uh, why would we bother with them? They are inequivalent. You, could, you, you can see that they are inequivalent because they have different character tables. Yes. Right? You can see that, no? This is these are this is the this is the set of characters for the first one for the for the tech first uh, so for the second one dimensional representation, right? If they are all uh, they are all different, right? They are all orthogonal to each other, so they're different uh, representations. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, then I will uh, stop the recording here and uh, I will open up a homework assignment for you on Moodle. Uh, your submission will be due by Monday and um, the exercises are basically all the things which I've given to you, uh, all the, wherever I've, 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 I've said this in red, right, in the notes. So this is an exercise. Um, uh, this is an exercise, right? Exercise, show this, show this, show this. All of these are exercises. Okay. So all of these exercises, these are part of homework one. Um, and it will be due on, on Monday. Not this example problem, obviously, because we are we are still working through it. Then this is an exercise, the cyclic property of the trace. Um, if if any of these problems uh, seem to be too easy, you can just say that. Okay, I mean, if you think it's trivial, just say that it's trivial. Fine. But. You have to be sure that it's trivial because if we, if I ask you the, this thing in the in the exam, you should be able to show it. Okay. Then this is an exercise, and uh, then this last exercise, which I've already well, I already showed it to you. I mean, you can look at the vectors and you can see that they are all wrong. Okay. All right. So I'll stop it here then.